This is part 5 of the American immigration story. The U.S. is born. Let's leave uh, New England and let's visit first where were the Filipinos. Now let's go to Louisiana. Louisiana was uh, first a uh, colony of Spain. This was uh, the foothold of Hernando de Soto. But for after that, for 100 years, Spain left Louisiana. King Louis the Fourteenth of France uh, decided to explore it. That's why the name Louisiana or Louis's uh, land. Now, were there Filipinos in Louisiana? Yes, it was believed that there were Filipinos there. 1763 is a date that needs to be uh, reconfirmed. But so far, what we have now is there were Manila men who settled at St. Malo, it's a water village, and there's a picture. And these are very much um, similar to the houses, the bamboo houses, the still houses on, by the water in the Philippines. And so if you see here, there's a picture with a, with a circle around a, uh, an individual believed to be a Filipino. Before the U.S. became a country, became a republic, Filipinos were around. Research is needed here. We will fast track. Now the American Revolution happens because um, the British had been, be, had been so hard on uh, the, the colonists. So they were taxed. There were um, 13 colonies that declared independence from Britain. And the war ended in uh, 1783. Now, the American Constitution was drafted, as you would remember, uh, the, the founding fathers would include George Washington, Thomas Jefferson, and um, James Madison. So this was the time when America told British that, no, we will not be under you. So the context of the land of the free and the brave only meant for the white immigrants. The conflict uh, was uh, by nature colonial power, uh, the question of land, and the question of religion. But always on the losing end would be the Native Americans who were constantly being pushed away from their ancestral land. So the New World emerged because of colonial wars, the Dutch and the British colonists, the separatists versus all the other religious groups and the natives, and the, the religious conflict of different philosophical uh, um, interpretations and practices of Christianity and Protestantism. And there is the racial and gender conflict to top it all. So women were relegated to the house while the men were doing mostly the public affairs. But women are active participants of history. So we see here, Clara Barton, she was um, a nurse and during the Civil War, she helped um, the soldiers of the Union and the Confederates to, well, when, when they were um, fighting. When they had injuries, she didn't side with anyone. She was a neutral person owing to her um, profession and in the medical field. So she was helping them. And in 1881, Clara Barton uh, set up the American Red Cross. And she's known as the angel of the battlefield. Women also were political. They, polit they exercised their right. You see here Sojourner Truth whose real name was Isabella Bomfrey. She was born in New York, but she was the first black woman to win against a man, a white man, when she was claiming her son. Her poem, Ain't I a Woman, was very popular. She spoke it at the uh, Third National Convention of Women in Ohio. They were already pushing for the rights of women to own property and to vote and to have education and to have uh, um, remuneration when divorce happens. So in the American story, the women were active participants. So what's America actually? America is an American experiment. 
this is the first country to separate church and state. As you will see, Spain was Catholic. And the national uh, religion was Catholic. You would see um, England at that time was also Catholic until it uh, moved to Protestantism. It was still a single religion, one, one church and one government. But, but the U.S. is an experiment that there was, has to be a separation of church and state. Christianity, however, was the dominant religion. And uh, at this time, American exceptionalism emerged, meaning uh, America is great. And at that time, too, um, assimilation of Native Indians was intensely campaigned. Uh, let us remember that while the Quakers were pacifists, they wanted peace, they, um, they wanted um, community, they also... Uh, actively campaigned that the native Indians assimilate to well, Western culture. Now, as designed by Thomas Paine, a Quaker, uh, Americans have to practice their religions privately. So meaning it's not a national church, but you can do it in your home or in, in many community churches that you want to establish. It's not for the entire country because they were trying to avoid what happened in England. Now, Thomas Jefferson wrote the Declaration of Independence in 1776, and then it was ratified in 1787 in here in New York at the Federal Hall. And we see that now as a museum on Wall Street. We go back to New York. New Amsterdam is a business hub. So New York has always been a business hub. And um, it's also a place where people can practice their religion, although it didn't happen on a silver platter. This picture here that you see is a residence of John Bowne, an Englishman who um, allowed the Quakers to practice their religion inside his house. Now, at that time, Governor Stuyvesant was also a very strict man. He had a great fight with the Quakers. And so the first expression of religious, um, religious assertion by the Quakers was called the Flushing Remonstrance, meaning they, they petitioned the existing government that they should be allowed to practice their religion. A few years before the uh, Civil War, the women were also organizing themselves. Now, in 1848, the Seneca, Seneca Falls Convention happened on July 19 and 20 in a, at the Seneca Falls in New York. This kicked start the official women's suffrage movement. And um, in their declaration of sentiments, the women said that men and women are created equal. So it was already an assertion, and this was led by Elizabeth K. K.D. Stanton, and uh, the convention was held at the uh, Wesleyan Methodist Chapel in Seneca Falls. And uh, the, this Methodist chapel was a breakaway from the Methodist Episcopalian Church because they also had some issue on uh, whether to support slavery or not. 16, 1861 until 1865, the Civil War happens. Question was uh, the slavery in the U.S. This is very popular. You would know that President Lincoln wanted the um, abolition of slavery, but the Confederate states, the ones in the southern part, who were heavily, uh, heavily dependent on slave labor, did not want to release their uh, slaves because it's an economic value to them. So there was war. Uh, President Lincoln was assassinated and uh, President Andrew Johnson took over. He was the first president to be impeached and then he was acquitted. Johnson subverted the process of the abolition of slavery in the reconstruction period. Nevertheless, what made America great? It was so focused on military um, upgrading. They had upgraded their ships, their weaponry. And so in 1898, 
this is us here, Filipinos. Um, the Spanish-American War erupted, and of course, this Spain was uh, defeated because America had her super firepower at that time already. And at that time, Cuba, the Philippines, and Latin America, uh, which were once colonies of uh, Spain, became the property of America. Here, uh, American exceptionalism rose or became uh, known during World War I and II because America saved Britain and France from Germany in the First World War. And it also saved the free world from Germany and Italy and Japan from 1942 to 1945. So there you see American sociologists call it, oh, American exceptionalism. We are based on liberty. We are equal before the law. We have individual responsibility. And we are um, a representative democracy through republicanism. And we have laissez-faire economics, meaning free trade. So these are the ingredients that make America great. And if you look at this picture, um, this is uh, American progress. You see, everybody is heading towards the West and there is a, an angel or a fairy that guides people to go to America because it is manifest destiny. It is destined that America is going to be great. Now, uh, this is a creation of artist John Gast. This is a very popular um, painting.